Hi, it's Maria from Around the Lake, and I'm sitting here with Marianne McFadden, the author of Book Lover. Hi, I'm Marianne McFadden, and I am the author of The Book Lover, which is set here in Warwick, New York. It's also set in Upper Greenwood Lake. Um, it travels a little bit past Greenwood Lake and Pine Island and some other areas in the vicinity, and I'm excited to be talking to Maria. Thank you, Marianne. struggling bookseller who has a store right here in Warwick called The Book Lover and she discovers an unknown author named Lucy who is from St. Augustine, Florida who ends up coming to The Book Lover for a signing under a little bit of crazy circumstances and ends up staying for a while and it's what happens when these two women sort of meet and become involved in each other's lives and sort of try to spur each other to continue following their dreams. It's also about um, those places inside of us that need nurturing, our passions that we sometimes put on hold as life gets busy. Um, but it's a great story. There's lots of drama, lots of intrigue, a little bit of mystery, and of course, some love. That's hard. Um, you know, honestly, I think I have to say it's Ruth, my bookseller. Um, even though I'm a writer and Lucy, the author in the book, is a little bit um, following a journey I took, Lucy is not me. Her story is different, but her writing journey is similar. Um, when, I was, when I was originally self-published before um, my first novel was taken by Hyperion Books and published internationally, I sold books literally out of the trunk of my car and I met so many booksellers that I became um, involved in what I call in the trenches, so to speak. I learned how to be a bookseller and so many of them shared stories with me and I know anyone who's a book lover just loves going into a bookstore and I learned firsthand how writers don't just struggle, the booksellers struggle like crazy. And I decided I wanted to tell this story. And as it grew, Ruth grew. And I just, I think everyone who's read it so far has fallen in love with Ruth and her store. That's a really good question. Um, you know, I really, I like to base my books in real places. Um, I love writing about a real setting because I like going different places and it, it's intriguing to my readers. They love reading about places that they know of. Um, I was honestly on a bit of a search for a real setting and I had gone to some other towns. Um, I live in a small town in Northwest New Jersey and I wanted my little bookstore, The Book Lover, to be set in such a town, um, but one that would give me enough to work with in, in creating a beautiful setting, a setting that my readers could get lost in and sink their teeth in. And I also needed a nearby lake um, where Lucy's going to be staying at a, at a lake cabin where her story unfolds a bit. So um, I had been to Warwick before. I always loved Warwick. And I came one day and, and something really amazing happened. I was into like a third draft of the story and I was still thinking, oh gosh, I need a setting soon because that's, that's the fun part for me, writing description. And I was coming up, I forget what road it was, and I came to the sign, Welcome to New York, the Empire State. And not 20 feet later, there was a street sign for Barrett Road. Well, Lucy's last name in the book is Barrett. And not 20 feet, or maybe 30, 40, 50 feet past that was Welcome to the Town of Warwick. And I felt like it was a sign. It was amazing. When I got to town and I walked around, as I said, I'd been here before, it just clicked. It was like, yeah, this is it. We have a lot of military people in our family. Um, not too close, but my dad was a Marine, and we've got niece, nephews who are Marines. And I really, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about a character um, who isn't your typical character. Um, so I started tinkering with Colin and he came to life very quickly and I also interviewed 
several army vets like Colin and oh my gosh I was just so blown away by their stories. One of the booksellers I got to know really really well in my um, in my travels um, is Betsy Ryder from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Her, her bookstore is called Otto's, A Book Lover's Paradise. Betsy actually sold books in a prison. Um, you know, she was very open with me and she inspired a lot about Ruth. Um, when I knew that she sold books in the prison, I this whole story just started to immediately come to life. And I actually knew someone who, who went through a bit of Thomas's journey. Um, I, I used his backstory for the reason Thomas went to prison. Um, that said, the person I know was very lucky. He had connections and he did not go to prison. Um, but he easily could have because he did something very dangerous. So I know for a fact, because I know people who have done things that are not so good and who, who really do grow from that experience, who realize that they've hurt people hurt their families, hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And they do come out on the other side um, transformed. Lucy lacked some confidence. She also lacked some trust. Lucy growing up um, was in a relationship with her father where he sort of nurtured her to sometimes tell little white lies when it was convenient or even to um, use sins of omission not quite be upfront and I think also Lucy was afraid that if she didn't complete the book if they didn't read the whole story um, it might be misconstrued Colin obviously didn't know she was writing about him and you know she was doing it in such a way that she thought would honor him but obviously, um, without knowing that and with seeing this hidden manuscript, it was misconstrued. One of the reasons I wrote this book um, is because the book world is, is going through such horrible changes, I would have to say, um, in recent years. Probably, you know, I, I've been quoted as saying the book the book industry and the book world have changed more in the past five years than they probably have in the past few centuries because of technology, um, because of some inequality in the business with booksellers, you know, online booksellers, many of them do not have to pay sales tax, which you walk into a bookstore and you buy a book, you're paying sales tax. Um, you know, there, there are some monopolies happening. And these people that own these bookstores, they don't do it to get rich. They do it like I do, because I love books. I'm in it because I love books. And I really wanted to, I wanted to build an awareness book. You know, my original intent was to show how a book starts in a writer's mind and goes through that magical process, you know, to become a book, to get into a bookseller's hands, and to end up on a store shelf and into their hands. And in, in the midst of doing that, you know, I created both sides, the writers and the booksellers. And the fact that this bookstore here went out of business is just, it's sad. It's really sad. People need to know that if they love books, if they like going in their local bookstore, they might spend a buck more. But it's worth it because you've got this incredible place to go where people are going to take care of you. That's such a tough question. I have a couple of favorite books and they run the gamut. Um, the Great Gatsby is probably my number one and I reference it in the book and I even reference the fact that there is mention of Warwick, New York in The Great Gatsby which maybe a lot of people here don't know about but it's, um, you know, it's back when Warwick was in its heyday because of the railroad. Some of my other favorite books, um, I love time travel and two of my favorites are about time travel. The first is um, Time and Again, which was written in the 70s by Jack Finney, and I think is still considered you know, one of the best and a classic. Another is the first in a series, Outlander, 
by Diana Gabaldon, which I, I just fell in love with the characters and her writing, and I think she's amazing. You know, I'm not an outliner. I basically start with a character and a situation. In this case, I started with a writer who was struggling, who you know, had this dream of becoming an author. And that very quickly grew to include Ruth, the bookseller, um, who's owned this bookstore since her husband was killed tragically, and she's got this big mystery behind her. Um, but she's struggling to hang on to her store. And so that's how I start. I, I sort of have a premise, but again, I write very organically. Um, I plan a few chapters ahead. I usually, in fact, all three of my books did not have endings. I would write multiple drafts without endings because I hate to force a story to a conclusion before I know how things are gonna evolve, how the characters are going to grow. So, um, I really did not have the end of this book for about, I would say, five drafts. I just kept writing. I get to a certain point, and I feel like it's time to go back to the beginning, tinker, polish, edit, maybe add, and then again, continue. And eventually, an ending comes to me, and, and usually it's the one I want. And it, it's, it's worked out perfect for, for me all three times, and hopefully it'll continue. The, the students, I have freshmen, and I know that when we start, I ask them, how do you feel about writing? Why do you love, hate writing? And the majority say that they don't like it or they hate it because I know they're afraid. I think we are programmed to believe that, that when we sit down to write, it should just come out perfect. You know, it should just flow. But Writing's not like that. When you see a piece of writing that looks flawless, effortless, let me tell you, a lot of work went into that piece. So what I encourage my students to do and other writers is to free write. Basically, just write. And if you can't even do that, talk. Record yourself and then write it down. But to sort of let go of that inner editor, that sensor inside of you that wants perfection. And ultimately, you know, my hope is that they can overcome that hurdle and begin to just really get their thoughts and feelings down and feel a little bit freer about it and come to love writing like I do. You know, this is beautiful, I have to say. You know, when you get the book and it's a real book and there's this amazing cover, because this I have to say this is the first cover I absolutely love. I'm, I'm gaga about this cover. Um, that's a sweet moment, but you know this doesn't happen every day. The day-to-day -day writing, you have to have some some happy moments, some beautiful moments because it is such a hard job. And I have to say, when I write something that clicks, either it's a description of a place, like there's a scene where I write about Colin coming out of the lake, and when I wrote that scene, I have to tell you. I was happy, you know, I felt like I nailed this scene, that I wrote something beautiful because I love words, I love language, and and when that happens, it's like, yeah, this is why you do it. Not really for this. This is what eventually happens, but it's the writing that keeps you going. Mary Ann, I want to thank you so much for your time and for coming down and meeting me, and have a great day. Thank you. You're so welcome.